Come on, everybody. Let's go. Get ready for a summertime adventure from another summertime story. This is the story of Time Remote. Written and told by award-winning author Carl Summer. Once there was a lively and bright young boy named Christopher who had many dreams. But sometimes he dreamed too much. Christopher would often look out the window and dream, Oh, if only I could be outside playing instead of being inside doing all this schoolwork. What was Christopher's dream, Andrew? To be playing outside instead of doing all this schoolwork. Yes. Christopher wished he would not have to be in school, and he wanted to be outside playing. He didn't want to do his homework. And there's another word that we can call Christopher. What is that? Miguel? Lazy. He's lazy. He's lazy. Now, I want to tell you something. This is probably one of my most powerful books out of all the books I've written. If you listen to this, it could change your life dramatically. Christopher is a young boy. He's in school, and something dramatically is going to happen to him. And I hope that you listen to it, because it's going to show you that what happens in the real world. Let's go on with the story. Next door to Christopher lived a kind old inventor named Dr. Finkel. Christopher loved to visit and watch him work on his different projects. One day, Christopher asked him, What are you doing today, Dr. Finkel? I'm experimenting with something that speeds up time, explained the old inventor. Christopher's eyes popped wide open. Speeds up time? Yes, said the kind old doctor. You dial the time you wish to skip into the remote, and zap, time goes forward. Wow! said Christopher as he stared at the time remote. Does it really work? Dr. Finkel rubbed his beard and frowned. Not as I would like. I cannot make time go backwards, but I'm still working on it. Then he smiled proudly and said, But it works well going forward. It does, said Christopher as he watched Dr. Finkel pick up the remote and start working on it. Then Christopher said, I wish I had that remote. I could skip doing all my homework. What did Christopher say if he could get a hold of that time remote? I, Mercy? That he could skip all his homework. Yes, if only I had that time remote. It makes time go forward. <whistles> wow, would that be great. I wouldn't have to do all my homework. Whenever there's homework, I just press the time in. So that's his mentality. In other words, Christopher is lazy. And he's going to pay a price for that, too, because of that attitude. The kind old doctor stopped working. He stood, put his hand on Christopher's shoulder and said, This time remote is only for very special occasions. It is not intended to get people out of work or out of trouble. Oh, groaned Christopher. Christopher, said Dr. Finkel, didn't you say that one day you wanted to invent an... Airmobile, Christopher interrupted. It will drive like a car and fly like an airplane. If you really want to do that, explained Dr. Finkel, you'll need to work hard in school and learn to solve problems. I hate problems, complained Christopher, and going to school is just one big problem. Christopher, said Dr. Finkel, you should never say that. If you want to become successful, you must face your problems and learn from them. One day when you're flying around in your airmobile, you'll be glad you did. But Christopher was not listening. He was dreaming again. If only I had that time remote. What did Christopher hate? Levi? Problems. He hated problems. You know, life has all kinds of problems. School has all kinds of problems. They give you homework. You know, if they just had you keep on adding 2 plus 2 or 3 plus 3, and that's all the math you ever did, you wouldn't learn anything. They always go in school from the known to the unknown. 
Then they go 20 plus 25. Then 1,050 to 3,045. Then they have subtraction and multiplication, division, fractions, decimal, percent. Then you got algebra, geometry, trig. They keep on going high, high, high. And that's how you learn. You're young, you start young, you start with the easy math, then it gets harder and harder and harder. And life is filled with problems. We face them all the time. And that's what we got to do. But Chris, no, he doesn't want problems. He, but he wants to invent an airmobile. Drives like a car and flies like a plane. Oh, that I'd like to do. Yes, but you got to go through and learn from your problems and, and to get an education and to want something. But no, oh, Chris, oh, if I only had that time remote. Only had that time remote. I could skip all the things that I don't like in life. Let's see what happens to him. One day when Christopher was visiting Dr. Finkel, the kind old inventor said, I'm leaving town and I don't know when I'm coming back. Would you please feed my cat while I'm gone? Sure, said Christopher. I'll take good care of her. Here are the keys to the house, said Dr. Finkel. And as the kind doctor often told his friends, if you need to borrow something while I'm gone, just help yourself. After school the next day, Christopher went to Dr. Finkel's house to feed the cat. Just as he was leaving the house, he spotted something. He stopped in his tracks. Oh, he gasped. If only I could borrow that time remote. Then a thought flashed through his mind. Didn't Dr. Finkel say, help yourself? Without a second thought, Christopher snatched up the remote and stuffed it into his pocket. Christopher raced to the nearby park. After making sure no one was looking, he carefully took out the time remote and began examining it. Oh my, he remembered. I'm supposed to be studying for the math test this afternoon. But if this time remote really works, he became so excited thinking that he might be able to skip studying for the test that his fingers trembled as he dialed in two hours. I hope this works, he said as he pushed the button. Zap! went the time remote. Christopher looked at his watch and yelled, it really works, it's two hours later. This is the happiest day of my life. Excited over his new discovery, he took off running to his house in time to hear his mother call, Christopher, time to eat. When Christopher walked into the kitchen, he smelled homemade pie. Oh, good, he said. But when he looked at the food that Mom was cooking, he held his nose and complained. I don't like to eat meat and vegetables. But they're good for you, explained Mom. They will make you strong and healthy. But Christopher was not listening. He walked into the living room and secretly dialed 30 minutes into his remote. He smiled as he pushed the button. Zap! went the time remote. Time for dessert, called Mom. Christopher grinned as he headed straight for the homemade pie. This is great, he thought. From now on, I'm eating only what I want. What did Mom tell Christopher to eat, Dijon? His vegetables and his meat. Yes, she told him to eat vegetables and meat, but he held his, no, I don't want to eat that. Now, I have five children, and I know how they eat sometimes. They don't want to eat what we prepare for them. But she says, that's healthy for you. Now, I'm old. I'm 84 years old, all right? And I'm very healthy. Why? Because when I was a young man, I started doing my exercise. I started lifting weights when I was 16, and I determined I was going to have a healthy and strong body. So I did my weights in the basement. I didn't go to the gym in those days. This was way back. And, and then I remember walking on the avenue. I would buy a, a bag of fruit. I wanted to eat healthy. And I did that with my children. And I still do eat healthy. I eat my fruits and vegetables and a little bit of meat. And I watch very carefully what I eat. All right? And so I'm very healthy today because I'm, I take care of my body. I exercise five days a week. I do my push-ups and sit-ups and I 
have a chin-up bar, I have a weight machine, I ride my bike 20 minutes a day. I try to keep healthy and I'm benefiting from that. And I have no plans of retiring. I'm trying to help boys and girls like you. And so that's why I talk about food in the story. I wrote this storybook because I want to see you healthy. But you see, a lot of boys and girls, as they get older, they're very unhealthy. And then when they become adults, they live a very sick life. They don't have a good quality of life because it didn't take care of their body. And so you learn, eat your fruit and vegetables and meat, all right? And don't just fill your tummy up with all kinds of junk food. Why am I telling you this? I want you to have a happy and a successful future. That's why I've written these storybooks. And so open up your ears and listen. That night, Christopher was so happy thinking about all the fun things he could do with the time remote that he could hardly sleep. But when he got to school the next day, his happiness quickly disappeared. He had not studied for his math test. Then his eyes lit up. The remote. I'll just dial in a few hours and school will be over. Christopher slipped the remote under his desk and dialed in the time for the dismissal bell. With a big grin, he pushed the button. Zap! went the time remote. Ring! went the school bell. Great, shouted Christopher. As he went skipping home that afternoon, he looked at his remote and said, Am I ever lucky? This time remote will make me the happiest person in the whole world. The next few days and weeks went by fast. Christopher loved the time remote. It was his greatest treasure. Whenever things became hard, he used the remote. He only wanted to play. Of course, Christopher still had problems, but not for long. He simply skipped right past them. So he thought. The problem was, his problems were not going away. They were piling up. Every time his mom had told him to clean his room, he had used the time remote. Now his room was a big mess. As for school, every time he had homework or a test, he had used a time remote. Now he was failing every class. Christopher was getting deeper and deeper into trouble. Now he felt he had so many problems that there was only one way out, the time remote. I'm so far behind in everything, he said to himself, that I'll never catch up. Besides, I'm tired of going to school. It's time for me to be grown up. Christopher yanked the remote out of his pocket and quickly dialed more time into it than ever before. He closed his eyes as he pushed the button. The gadget shook and spewed out great puffs of smoke. It made a terrible noise. Then all of a sudden, zap went the time remote. When the smoke settled, Christopher was 18 years old. Yes, he shouted as he walked out of school for the last time. He threw his books into the bushes and said with a great big smile, I'm so glad that my school days are over and that my problems are gone forever. Now I can get a job and do whatever I want. How does Christopher feel now? Olivia? He's very, very happy. He's excited. This is the greatest thing in the world that ever happened to him. Takes his books, throws them away. He's 18 years of age, now he can get a job and do whatever he wants. That's what he thinks. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's not that easy. Let me give you a little bit of background. I'm also a tool and die maker by trade. I've been a foreman in a tool and die shop, all right? Then I became a tool designer. Then I was operations manager of a large tool and die shop where, where I hired lots of people. And I have three companies. One is a publishing company, a video studio that we have here, video recording, and also have a machining company. And we are the largest in North America doing the specialized machining. It's, it's called Reliable EDM. We do electrical discharge machining. All right? And I interviewed many people. I hired many people. I interviewed them. And I'm going to show you now the real world of work. Now, he's out of school. He thinks now he can get a job and do anything he wants. That's what he thinks. 
there's another world out there. And I want you to have your eyes open to what the real world is like. And he's going to find out what the real world is like. Let's see what happens to him now. Christopher quickly found the job working in the store stocking shelves. This is perfect, he thought. Now I can buy anything I want. But Christopher soon discovered that he had more problems than before. Eating out was expensive, and he barely made enough money to pay for his apartment and car. One day at work, Christopher began daydreaming that he was flying around in the airmobile that he had invented. Suddenly, a loud voice brought him back to Earth. Christopher, shouted his boss. What are you doing? I'm stocking shells, he answered. You're doing it all wrong, the boss complained. You've got cans upside down and backwards, and you've mixed up the vegetables with the soups. You're going to have to be much more careful if you want to work here. Well, said Christopher to himself, if he doesn't like the way I work, I'll just find a better job. Besides, I hate this kind of work. What was Christopher doing now, Jocelyn? He was mixing up all the cans. Yes, why? Because he couldn't read. He couldn't read. He couldn't read the cans. And so he got all mixed up. And the boss starts yelling at him. You know, you can't work in a company and do whatever you want. And workers don't listen to what I tell them to do. I don't want them to work for me. You have to do what the employee tells you to do. Otherwise, they have a nice little term called they lay you off or they fire you. Employers want workers who listen and are willing to work and do what they're told. But what was Christopher's attitude when the boss here yells at him? Deshaun? He said, okay, I don't need this job anyways. I'll just find a better job. Yeah, I'll just get another job. That's what he thinks. Let's see what does happen. After work, Christopher began searching for another job. One employer asked, what did you learn in school? Another asked, what kind of skills do you have? When he was asked questions like these, he would simply shrug his shoulders and say, I don't know. Since he had skipped so much school, he had hardly learned anything. All the employers told him, we're sorry, we don't have any work for you. Christopher continued searching for another job but no one would hire him. While at work, Christopher began to daydream again. He wondered if he would ever be able to build his airmobile. He shook his head and said, You know, Dr. Finkel was right. I should have studied harder. Then his eyes lit up. I know what I'll do. I'll just go back to school. What does Christopher wish that he had done? Miguel? Stayed in school. Stayed in school and studied and, and did something. But again, you can't go backwards. Now he's hoping that Tommy Mutt will go backwards, but it's, he, it can't go backwards with him. All right? He doesn't, it only goes forward with him now, but he's, oh, I wish I could, I should have listened to Dr. Finkel. You know, I only hope that you never say those words. That's why I've written these storybooks, so you don't have to say, oh, I wish I would have done that. You do something now. You prepare yourself for a great future. You study, you go to school, you do your homework, you get good grades and learn and make something out of yourselves. And don't take this lazy, oh, I hate problems. I'm going to quit school. I'm going to take the easy road. And that's what he did. And he thought if he quit school, that, oh, that would be, eh, this would be so wonderful. And now he's a miserable kid. No one wants to hire him. He doesn't know anything, has no skills. I'm not going to hire him. He can't work for me either. All right, let's see what happens now. He's going to go back to school. Christopher began to whistle as he went to his first class in night school. But as the teacher taught, he became confused. This is going to take lots of hard work, Christopher complained. After two days, he quit school. Christopher groaned as he went back to work stocking shells. He hated his job and began to get even more careless. This is your last chance, warned the boss. Either you improve or you'll be fired. Christopher tried harder than ever to find a new job, but he had the same problem. 
No one would hire him because he had no skills. Notice Christopher's trying very hard to find a new job, but what's happening? Isaiah? He can't find a job. Yes, he can't find a job. And that's the real world of work. You have to offer the employer something, some kind of a skill to get hired. You can't just come in as a body and say, I want a job. What, do you, what can you do? Can you help the company to make money? That's really what you have to learn to do when you're working for somebody. But Christopher says, nah. I guess I'm just going to have to dial in more time. The boss is yelling at him at his old job. He's going to get fired. And he says, well, well, I'm going to press time in when I'm older. So his hopes rise up. Let's see what happens to him now. As Christopher sat in his empty apartment, he reasoned, maybe if I were older, I could get a better job. I want to stress something else here. Look at this fancy apartment that he has here. All right? <laughs> All right? His beautiful table he has, right? And look away, he keeps his clothes in here. All right, look at the cabinet he has. Yeah. Right? He is poor. He's broke because he has no skill. He's making minimum wage. You see, so, and this is what happens if you don't have an education. So I encourage you, make something out of yourself so you're not like this here. He dialed in three years and with great hopes, he pushed the button. Zzzz, went the timing mode. Yes, shouted Christopher. But his happiness did not last long. The only job he could find was sweeping factory floors. He hated this job even more than stocking shelves. While sweeping the floors, he noticed that the people working on machines made much more money than he did. He said to himself, I can do that kind of work. I'll go to the office and ask the manager if I can work on the machines. When he went to the office, the manager said, we could use another good worker, but to work on the machines, you'll have to take a math test. The thought of taking a test sent shivers down his spine. Never mind, he mumbled as he picked up his broom and walked out. Christopher searched and searched for another job, but he always had the same problem. No one would hire him because he had no skills. Christopher became very discouraged looking for work, so he kept using the time remote to make his problems pass away. Meanwhile, he got married and had a baby boy. Now, whenever his wife or his child became sick, and they were often sick, he would use the time remote to make that time also pass away. His doctor advised him, if you and your family would eat right, you would all be much healthier. Christopher hung his head and whispered, I know I should eat right. But in spite of his doctor's advice, he would still use his remote whenever food was served that he did not like. What did the doctor tell Christopher to do? Levi? Your family needs to eat more healthy food. Yes, your family needs to eat more healthy food. And they tell you that. But what does Christopher do? He doesn't like it. He didn't do it when he was young. He used the time remote. Anything that was difficult, the time remote. Anything that's difficult, the time remote. So he's a quitter. He's not learning his lesson. He's trying to skip through life, avoiding problems. Instead of facing them and overcoming them, he's using the time remote. Always the easy way. Don't be like that. Christopher's bills began piling up. He needed more money. He searched for another job, but he finally found a nighttime job sweeping floors. He knew little else. Now he was often sick and always tired. Life was now one big problem. Now we find Christopher working in a job that he hates even more than the one he had before. He uses time remote, he's older now, he's sweeping floors. And he's, look, hey, look at those people working on those machines. They make a lot more money than I do. I want to get a job like that. So he goes to the manager and he tells him, I like to work on those machines. And what does the manager tell him to do? Olivia? To take a math test? Yeah, I want to give you a math test. And when Christopher heard that, 
He didn't know math. He skipped school, so he doesn't know it. And he says, never mind. Picked up his broom and walked out. And that actually happened to me. I had a worker working for me that used to do the floor sweeping, clean machines, take out the garbage, and do those kind of jobs. And I had two of my sons work for me doing the machining work, and the other son works in the, with the video and the audio that I had, the company, recording company, all right? And this man kept on, oh, I, I want to work on the machines too, I want to work on the machine, and kept harassing my son, I want to work on the machine, I want to work on the machine. And I still can picture that man. I told him, send him in, send him to me. I still see him in the doorway. He says, I, I like to work on the machines. I told him, if you want to work on the machines, you'll have to take a math test. He walked out because he didn't know math. And we do that. Actually, we give a math test to anybody who works in here. And not only a math test, I put them on a machine and have to straighten up a, a vice. I want to see how they operate the machine. Are they pokey, lazy? You know, just lazy? I don't want them. I want somebody who has some energy. I watch the way they walk. I never one time when I was operations manager, um, this person came in, filled out the application, you know, to work for, the, for us. And I interviewed many people. And we watch, you know, when you want to hire someone, you look for every little thing. And this young man was sitting there, said, okay, come over here. And he got out of that chair like he was an 80-year-old man, very slow and pokey. I rejected him like that within a few seconds. If he's that lazy getting out of a chair, I can imagine what he's going to do in the workforce. Just the way he got out of that chair. No, he, I don't want him working for me. I, we want workers who are energetic, who have an interest, they're going to work. And that's what we're looking for. So you learn that. You make something out of yourself. Often he said to himself, Oh, how I wish I had listened to Dr. Finkel. I could have done so much better. If only I could go back and be in school again, I'd sure do things differently. But Christopher knew that the remote could only take him forward in time, never backward. What is Christopher wishing now? Juliet? That he could go back in time and listen to his teacher, mom, dad, and Mr. Finkel. Yes. Oh, if only I could go back. But you can't. You can't go back. But you could do something now for your future. Yes, that you can do. You can study, listen to your parents, work hard when you're going back to school again. You're going to do your work. You're going to learn. You're going to make something out of yourself. You can do something now for the future. You can dream all you want. You can't go backwards. Now he, tried, he went back to college. Now he really it was so far above him, he couldn't even stay in class. What, was, what the teacher was saying was so far, he said, oh, I, I can't do it. He quit. But he's a quitter anyway. But now he's wishing, I wish, and oh, how many people, I wish, I wish, I wish. Doesn't work. But you're young. Now you can wish for a better future and do something about it now. All right? And that's what this storybook is about. So you kids will have a happy and a successful future. That's why this book is written. One day while sitting in his easy chair, Christopher Day dreamed of the time when he no longer had to work. Then I could do anything I want, he said to himself. Oh, how I wish I were old enough so I could retire. Then I know I'd finally be happy. His heart began to pound for joy when he thought about all the fun things that he could do when he was retired. Suddenly, Christopher realized that with the time remote, he could be as old as he wished. He jumped up from his chair, and without thinking any further, he quickly dialed in the time. With a great big smile, he pushed the button. Great, he shouted as he watched the time remote rattle and sizzle and make all kinds of noises. Then zzzz, went the remote. Am I ever glad, sighed Christopher as he plopped down into his chair. Now I don't have to work anymore. But now Christopher had more problems than ever. 
he was alone. His wife had died, and his son had gotten married and moved far away. He was poor and sick, bored and sad, and had constant pain. All he did was sit in his easy chair and watch TV. Christopher looked angrily at the remote and said, Time went by so fast, and I enjoyed so little of it. I wish I'd never heard of a time remote. I'm throwing it away. Disgusted, he rose slowly from his easy chair, picked up his cane, and walked to the park. As he passed by a church, he began to shake all over as he thought about his future. When he came to the park, he saw men and women sitting together and smiling. He saw fathers and mothers laughing and playing with their children. Look at me, groaned Christopher. I missed all the important things in life. Now I'm alone and miserable. Why does Christopher say now about the time remote, Emma? He wishes that he had never heard of it. Yes, Christopher, he hates his time remote now. This thing was a, his dream come true. Now he hates it. Because now he's always sick. He's miserable. Right? And reason why he's so sick, because he didn't eat right. And that's what happens in life. If you don't eat right, your body's going to suffer for it. And foolishly, some kids, they start smoking, and they, listen, they, they start taking drugs and pills, and because they're friends, everybody's doing it. Following the crowd, they don't know how to say that two-letter word, which is... No! And that's what I'm hoping you kids will learn to do in life, to say, no, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to take care of my body. I'm going to listen to my parents. I'm going to make something out of myself. I'm not going to be like Christopher here. Oh, now he wishes. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. But you can wish for a better future. You can do something about it. And I hope that you do. Now, let's see what Christopher does now. He's a very miserable, unhappy man. He hates that time remote that he got. Christopher walked to the lake. He shook the time remote and said, the day I got this thing was the worst day of my life. Just look at me. I wasted my whole life. I wanted to be an inventor, but I never accomplished one good thing. Trying to live an easy life has brought me nothing but trouble and sorrow. What did Christopher say about living an easy life, Juliet? That all there was was trouble and sorrow. Yes, just trouble and sorrow. Taking the easy way in life, following the crowd, not taking care of your body, and not going to school, not studying, quitting, and all those kind of things that makes life easy. Nothing but trouble and sorrow. So you learn. Face your problems. Learn. Do something. And now Chris has got this time remote. He hates it. He wants to get rid of it. And he's in the process of throwing it away. Shaking with anger, Christopher reached back to throw the time remote into the water. But it slipped out of his hand and smashed against the rock. What's this? Mumbled Christopher as he went to pick it up. The remote had popped open, revealing a small red button. Just then, Christopher remembered how Dr. Finkel was trying to get the remote to travel backward in time. What? What if? Gasped Christopher. Dr. Finkel was able to get this remote to work backward. His hands trembled so much that he could barely get his finger on the button. Holding his breath, he pushed the button firmly. Suddenly, the remote shook and sizzled and made all kinds of noises. It became red hot, almost too hot to hold. Smoke began to surround Christopher. Then, zzzz, went the remote. In a flash, Christopher was standing in the park all alone. He looked at his hands, then his feet. It worked! It really worked, he yelled. He jumped up and down and shouted, Hooray! I'm young again. I've got another chance to live my life over. This is the happiest day of my life. Christopher was so happy that he raced home as fast as he could. And just as he neared his house, he heard his mother call, Christopher, time to eat. Now Christopher is young again. And what does he say about himself? All right, Emma? This is the happiest day of my life. This is the happiest day of my life. I can live my life over again. In other words, he's your age right now. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to live? You're going to go back to school again shortly. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to make something out of yourself? 
Are you going to eat right? Are you going to start listening to your parents? If you're smart, that's what you'll do. Christopher hurried into the kitchen and gave his dad and mom giant hugs. I'm here, he shouted as he sat down to eat. And do I have a story to tell you? But first I need to eat my meat and vegetables. Are you all right, Dad wondered. I'm great, laughed Christopher. Are you sure you're feeling well, asked Mom. Of course, Christopher answered. Eating meat and vegetables makes you strong and healthy. And after I eat, I'm going to study for a math test and clean my room. Dad and Mom were in shock. They stared at their son in amazement. Then Christopher said, I need to return something to Dr. Finkel's house. I don't want it anymore. What is it? asked Dad. Christopher simply smiled and said, A time remote. And now, an award-winning song from Character Kids. Get away from my problems I've got plans and dreams that I want to get to All this work keeps getting in my way I wonder what I should do Clean your room, eat your veggies, study for the test I'm tired of all the things I say that I've got to do There's games to play and friends to see And all I want to eat is junk food All I want to do is play All this work just gets in my way You gotta work Always comes along that seems much too hard What you've got to learn is to work the problems out A problem-solving kind of person What you've got to be all about If you're ever gonna live your dream You've got to learn this first Ignoring all your problems never makes them go away Life is filled with good and bad And what we've got to do is say Hey, all my dreams can come true If I work my problems Take a little work, y'all.